depends on if you want to change or not. Because you're not going to change if you don't want to. You are going to be stuck like that. Right. Yeah. You can't make everyone happy. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done that since I was a kid. Story of our lives. Mm. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have a special guest here with Hi. me. Hi. <laughs> you want to introduce yourself? My name is Melissa. Also known as Mel or Melly. My Melly. Y'all can call her Mel. I call her Melly. Yes, we have our coffees. Mm. And yes, it's good. Okay. Today's video is the first video to my interview series where I will be asking a special guest. Me. Today is Mel. 20 questions and they have to answer as honestly as possible. Okay, I can do that. Y'all pray for me. <laughs> While we do our makeup, and of course, I will list everything in the description box below. Let's get started. Yay. So, first question is, what's the biggest or most important lesson you've learned? About nothing specific, just life in general, like something yep. I've learned. Anything. It could be anything. Mm. You're never going to make everyone happy. <gasps> Oh, that is a I, good one. Yeah. Oh, I like that one. I started off life with being such a people pleaser. Mm. And I'm working on getting out of that now. I still have a long way to go because it's that, kinda that's a set in my bones. But yeah. you can't make everyone happy. Mm, that's a good one. So at the end of the day, do what makes you happy. Mm, no matter what. Question number two is, who do you sometimes compare yourself to and why? So this is like a two-part. I feel like that could go one of two ways. Um, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you two answers, and I'll give you why for both. Okay. I feel like sometimes I compare myself to my parents. Um, Makes sense. I, I look at my mom. My parents are separated. Okay. So I look at my mom and the way her life is and what traits I got from her. And then I look at my dad and how his life is and what traits I got from him and where I fit in between the mix between of them. Between that, yeah. Okay. And at the <clears throat> end of the day, it's, I mean, they're what made me who I am today. I don't know that I would say it's it's good that I have these traits or bad that I have those traits. Okay. But it's just who I am. That's a good way of looking yeah. at it. And there are some traits I have that I didn't get from either one of them. I just get it throughout life. But let me ask you this. You said that's just the way I am. Right. Does that mean you can change the way you are and you want to? Or do you think because that's the way you are, you're stuck like that? Um, no, I don't think you're stuck like that. I think it determ it, it depends on if you want to change or not. Because you're not going to change if you don't want to. You are going to be stuck like that. Right. But okay. anyone can change. You just have to realize that you can change. Mm. And you, you already know I'm kind of going through that process a little bit now. Yeah. On this personal self-growth journey that I'm doing, mm -hmm. which is why you've invited me here today. Yes, because everybody should be on board. Well, I shouldn't say everybody, but most people should be on board. Yes. Um, and then also, I want to say for my second answer, I feel like sometimes I compare myself to you. <gasps> to me? Yes, um, because you inspire me so much. You motivate me so much. You help me with everything you're my Melly. The bestest friend anyone could ever ha have or ask for. And sometimes I wonder if I'm just as good of a friend as you are and how I could be a better friend or a better person. Aww. And then some things I feel like I'm already as good as you are, you know, like where with you being helpful or, you know, creative or positive, certain <sighs> things like that. So oh, I love that. Question number three is, when is the last time you tried something new and what was it? <laughs> I know the answer to this. Yeah. So, uh, do you know what I'm going to say? I think. Okay. And I tried skydiving. <laughs> is that what you thought yeah, I was going to yeah, say? Yeah. It was for 
for your birthday. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so, so yeah, so my birthday was in August, the first weekend in September. And I'm terrified of heights, absolutely terrified. I can't even get on a ladder, I'm terrified of heights. My birthday is normally not the most positive day in the year for me. And mm. I decided this year to change the course of that. I was going to do something I wanted to do, something that I was excited about, something that I would be proud of. And I decided to go jump out of an airplane. I, I still can't believe it. And <laughs> I did it. I survived it. I would do it again in a heartbeat. It was amazing. So would you say you conquered your fear of heights or do you think it'll take a little bit more practice and just... Um, I, I think it would definitely take a little bit more practice. In that sense, I felt very secure. I had someone connected to me. Okay. I had gone through a brief training. I had a parachute. A safety I felt safe, yes. Yeah. Now, if I go out here and stand on a ladder, you'll still... I could fall and get hurt. You yeah. Know, there's nothing connecting me or holding me onto the ladder. So I feel like I would still be scared of that. I feel like I would be more able to try to get on the ladder now. Okay, Do that makes sense? sense. Yeah. It makes it a little bit... I'll have a little bit of anxiety doing it, but... Because you have that background. Of, I would try it now. Yeah, it's yeah. more like a mental background. Like, I've done it before, I can do it again. And it's like the mental barrier that blocks yeah. you. So because you've passed that a little bit with skydiving, it'll right. help you in future scenarios. Yes, yes, absolutely. That makes sense. Oh my gosh, I love that. I still can't believe you did that. I totally recommend it. <laughs> hey guys, so completely, completely messed that up. I skipped over question number four. So um, Mel, what gets you excited about life? Ooh, I would say a couple different things. One, I am working on bettering myself. So that in itself in itself is exciting to me. Mm -hmm. um, just knowing that I'm becoming a better person. I'm doing a lot of the activities that I've wanted to do for a while, mm -hmm. um, especially my origami. Oh. I get really excited about my origami. You're doing good with that. Yeah. It's, it's fun. And it also helps me with patience and just taking mm. time to enjoy the moment and not be in a rush. Mm. That's a good one. Also on the adult side of it, I have gotten a better job recently, so I'm able to pay off my debt a little bit quicker. Ooh. And I don't know why, but I get really excited when I pay my bills every month. Adulting 101. Yeah. Just seeing the balances get smaller. Because um, once I get the debt paid off, um, my, we'll, we'll say extra income, mm -hmm. I'm going to use to put towards my bucket list <gasps> and start doing some of those activities. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. Yeah. So just knowing that I'll be able to do some of the things that I've wanted to do for a while. Mm. Um, I'm really excited about that. Okay. That'll be fun. That makes sense. You're the best. I know. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, now back to the original video. Sorry, guys. Thanks. Question number five is what can you do today that you are not capable a year ago? Since I'm on this journey, I can now run. So I've always been on the lazier side in life. Um, I can walk all day, but I've never been able to run. I've never been able to run the four laps, you know, the equal a mile yeah. around the track in gym class. And since we've started doing our jogging, every week we've been doing really good we ran when i say run it's not run, oh run. It's, it, yeah it's more of a jog, it's a jog. Yeah. but now um we did it and we jogged four miles without, without stopping. stopping once i'm so proud yes. of us and don't let anyone tell you that you can't do something yeah i didn't think i could do it and when you started coming jogging with me it really helped me but we it's were, a progress. Yeah, it's, and we were in different spots within our journey, too. That helped me out a lot, jogging with someone. Because when I would jog by myself, I'm like, oh, this is, this is not working out. Especially if you don't have a lot of self-discipline or, or, you know, personal willpower. Yeah. You've got to have somebody to hold you accountable. So it, if you don't have that accountability, it's, it's easier to quit. Yeah. Ooh, okay, this is a good one. Number six. What would you do differently if you knew nobody would judge you? 
would you do? I would say like? what was on my mind. Mm, like kind of like no Anything. filter. In, no filter. Let, let me ask you this. Okay. Some people get that confused with like the no filter thing with having no filter, but being rude about it and having no filter and being nice about it. Which oh, one? no, I'm not rude. Okay, so you would have no filter, but still, like, kind of deliver it in a nice way? Right. So, for the most part, I try to bite my tongue when things upset me or things bother me. Mm -hmm. Or if I have a question about something, I normally don't ask it. Or if I get offended or upset about something, I don't say anything. Like, speak up on it. Right. It's. I guess this is out of fear of judgment. But I don't, again, going back to me being a people pleaser, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to upset anyone. I don't want to create conflict. I don't want to hurt someone's feelings. Um, would you consider that judgment? I think so, because if you weren't worried about what they were going to say. Yeah. Because if you're worried about what they're going to say, then it would be like, I don't want them judging me. I don't want them to get upset. I don't think it's a big judgment. But it's still some kind of judgment. Yeah. So that makes sense. Or just speak my mind a little bit more about any topic. People pleasing and saying no and just, you like want to try to help them out. Right. Even if it inconveniences you. Yeah. Yeah. Question number seven is, what is the difference between living and existing? Oof, that's a good one. <laughs> me five years ago versus me five years from now. Um, mm. No. <laughs> between living and existing, I feel like existing is what I have been doing. Okay. And for the most part, what I still am doing. Okay, so I feel like existing is when you, you wake up, you get dressed, you go to work, you come home, cook your dinner, you pay your bills, go to bed, and then you wake up and you do it all over again. You might have a night out with the girls or the guys, and then, before you know it, it's Monday again, and then you're right back into your same routine. Yeah. But that's not living. Yeah. That's just... That's what society tells us we should do. They say you should grow up. You should get married. You should have a family. You should mm. own a house. You should go to college. You Try should to have get a, a good job. Try to get a six-figure job. Yes. Mm. And people at the end of the day wonder why they're not happy. If they had a better job, they would be happy. If they had more money, they would be happy. If they have another kid, they'll be happy. You know, it's all these things that could make them happy. But really, you just do what you want to do. If you want to go to the Grand Canyon, go to the Grand Canyon. I have other small things, like just, I don't know why I want to do it, but I want to have a tarot card reading. Okay. And then, I feel like you should go with me to that. That, that would be fun. That would be we fun. should do that. Yeah. Okay. And I feel like when you stop listening to what society tells you mm -hmm. is life, and you start doing what you think is life... And what makes you happy, that's when it becomes living and not just existing. When you take control over it and just do you. Mm, okay. Would you say taking more risks would be more living? It could be considered a risk. But a risk would mean that you have the potential to lose something. Mm. So in this sense, I guess it depends on what you would be losing. If you give up a job opportunity mm. to do something that you've always wanted to do, that would be considered taking a You're risk. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it just depends on what you would be giving up or replacing in order to do mm. what okay. it is you want to do. And at that point, what you're wanting to do is considered a reward. So that does the reward true. outweigh the risk? It's your life. And we're not guaranteed tomorrow or the next five years. So. That is true. That reminds me, when you talk about risk versus reward, go check out my other video about 13 things mentally strong people don't do. I will list it in the description box below because that author, Amy, talks about that in her book and I did a video previewing that book. So go check that out. Okay. Question number eight would be, if you had a friend who spoke to you in the same way that you sometimes speak to yourself, how long would you allow this person to be your friend? Okay, so it depends on what day it is. 
Oh. Okay. So sometimes I speak to myself in a way that's very positive, uplifting, motivational, and I'm just my own biggest cheerleader. And I tell myself, I'm beautiful, I'm smart, I can do anything, I can make it. Don't listen to what these negative people have to say. Just do you because you're the greatest there is. In that sense, I would be friends with that person forever. Okay. But some days I am not that kind to myself. Mm. I'm actually probably really hard on myself. It would, yeah, it would be a struggle because some days... I tell myself I'm not good enough. Mm. Why am I even trying to do this? There's other people out there that are better at it and smarter. I just get so down and out on myself. That's a good question. Yeah, it is. That's a good question. I'm like over here. I don't know mm -hmm. if I like that question. That one <laughs> it makes you really think. makes you yeah, yeah think about yourself. And make sure like you're checking in with yourself too. Like to and stop and think, hey, like that's not okay that I'm telling myself I'm not good enough or I don't think I can achieve this goal or that goal. Like that's not, that's not a good way to check in with yourself. So maybe I need to be more aware of how I talk to myself mm. and when I'm having those negative, those negative thoughts, just think, I would not want Holly saying this to me. Oh, that's a good way to remember it. Oh, that's genius. Question number nine. What activities make you lose track of time? Hanging out with you. Uh, um, my Nelly. Yeah, anytime we get together, <laughs> I feel like we lose track of time. Yep, that um, is true. Definitely spa days and girl days when you're doing your nails, getting massages, Ooh. pampering, just self-relaxation. When I do my hair bows, I make oh. hair bows. So sometimes uh, when I do my hair bows, I'll get on a roll, reading, podcasts. And I will link um, her hair bows down below, guys. Aw, thanks. You're welcome. Love a supportive friend. That's what we're here for, is to support each other. Exactly. Question number 10. If you had to teach something, what would you teach? And this could be anything. If I have to teach something. I would teach compassion. Compassion? compassion. Wow, okay. Compassion. Ooh, that's a good one. Because I feel like there are so many people that don't have compassion. Yeah. Or even if they have compassion, they don't know they have compassion. Mm. Or they don't express it. Yeah. Or they're scared to. I don't know, something. But I feel like more people need compassion. I feel like so many people today either don't have it at all or they have more anger and hatred or mm. jealousy or envy or greed. Everybody has all these emotions and I would like to see more compassion. Question number 11. Are you holding on to something that you need to let go of? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> that's a good one. Yes. Oh. All of my negative past experiences. You would let go of that? Yes. Really? Oh, well. I wouldn't want it to erase it. Right. And change it and okay. make it never have happened. Yeah. But I want to let go of the fact that I still hang on to all those right. experiences. I let them almost haunt me at times. I'll try to do something new and the first thing that pops in my mind is, oh, do you remember when that happened 10 years ago? And mm. I dwell on it and think about how things could have been different and why did I allow this to happen or why did I do that? And I worry so much about the past and how I could have changed it. Mm. And it just really has a lot of control on the way I do things now. Which, to some extent, I guess is good. Right. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. But... It's good in the sense that you learn from your mistakes to not Correct. repeat them. Right. But it's bad in the sense of when you let them have that big of a hold on you. Correct. That, yeah. Where that, it kind of blocks you almost yeah. from trying to achieve maybe a goal you had in mind right. or a risk you want to take. Right. That's a really good question, I feel like. Yeah. 
All these are good questions. Yeah, I think we're saying that about everyone. So you're you're probably right. Question number 12. When you are 80 years old, what will matter to you the most? When mm. I'm 80, what will matter to me the most? Mm. I would say my family, friends, loved ones, you know, everything in that category. Mm -hmm. And knowing that I did everything I wanted to in life, not having any regrets about anything mm. and just being, being satisfied. Right. Not having left anything unfinished or undone. The good one. You said that about everyone. Not, oh, they're all so <laughs> good. Number 13. If you could have dinner with anyone who is either dead or alive, who would it be? And if I could have dinner with someone, I would pick my uh, my late grandmother. Mm -hmm. She was always really important to me. She was a big part of my life growing up. And I would just like to be able to spend a little bit more time with her and just reminisce about the olden days, as people say. <laughs> <laughs> just be reminded of how it was in simpler times mm. when we didn't have so much stuff to worry about, you know? Wow, that's it. It's nice and refreshing just to be simple sometimes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would say my grandmother. Okay. Number 14, which is worse, failing or never trying? Mm. Well, it definitely sucks to fail. Feels like you were defeated or not good enough. Um, however, if you don't try, you don't know that you're going to fail or succeed. Mm. So I would say the worst would be not trying. Because what if you don't try and you could have done something great? Right. What if you could have done it? You're never going to know that because you didn't try. And so what if you fail? That's when you get up, you learn from what you did wrong, and you try it again. It's only considered failing if you don't try it at all. The fact that you even tried mm. is not a failure. Even if you didn't make it, you still got something out of that experience. Mm, that's even a good if it, point. Yeah, even if it's not the outcome you were looking for or hoping for, you got something out of it. Mm. So, I wouldn't consider it a failure. It just wasn't the success you wanted. Right, right. So, yeah, I would say definitely not trying is going to be the worst. That makes a lot of sense. I yep. like that. Okay, question number 15 is what are you most grateful for? You. My Melly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love you. Y'all, get yourself a best friend <gasps> like Melly. Get you one like Holly. Oh. Uh, you, my family, friends, my health, the fact that I'm able to still be here today. What am I most grateful for? Yep. Oh, so I guess I shouldn't just make a list of everything I'm grateful for. I was just going to start listing stuff. <laughs> That's funny. And I was just listening. I was yeah. like, okay, yeah. Makes sense. Okay. So, friends and family, and then health. Question number 16. Are you more worried about doing things right or doing the right thing? Both. Because I feel like the correct answer, if we're, you know, the co correct, correct answer would be doing the right things. However, people know that I have a habit of being a people pleaser. So with that being said, I feel like I would lean more towards doing things right. I want to make sure everything gets done correctly to their satisfaction so that they're proud, they're happy, and I would feel good about myself. But at the end of the day, that's what I'm trying to get out of. I'm trying mm. to get more into doing me and my own thing and not worrying about other people and what they think. And mm. ultimately, it's all about your own integrity, which would be right. doing the right things, mm. whether they're wrong or not or whether they're done correctly or not you know at the right. end of the day you've done what you believe is right that makes sense yes that's a good answer so i'm going to go with doing the right thing okay question number 17 what is the one thing you would most like to change about the world 
all the hate. Mm, it goes back be, to compassion. Yeah, I think that would be my answer too. People need more compassion. People get so uptight and so concerned and so worried about nitpick stuff. And there's so many more important things. There's so much stuff going on in the world that we should be concerned about. Oh yeah, I would Genius. I would take away all the evilness. Mm. And anything related to it. Question number 18. What do you like to do when you're sad? I like to sulk. Mm. Spend all day in the bed. Make myself cry. Watch some sad movies. Listen to sad songs. Kind of to like let it out. Release it. I used to try and avoid it. And keep it all tucked in. Because I thought it wasn't okay to be sad. It wasn't okay mm. to sulk. It wasn't okay to be upset. I was supposed to be a strong woman and suck it up and deal with it. But if you do that and you don't do it correctly, you don't you don't deal with it. You just bury it That's and suppress it. And right. it's going to come out three times as crazy when you do let it out. And strong. Yeah, right. so I used, I, that's what I used to do. Now I acknowledge, hey, I'm sad, I'm upset, this is why, and today we're just going to bask in sadness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and depending on what's bothering me, I may be sad for a couple hours, I may be sad for a whole day. I may be sad for two or three days, depending on what it is, but I dedicate the time now and allow myself to be sad. And then when my time is up, I move on and go on about my business and we're good to go. Yeah, I like that. I'll wear pajamas all day, eat some chocolate, mm. drink some wine. Just kind of have a moment. Yeah. Question number 19 is what's your favorite childhood memory? And my favorite was playing science and doing all these science experiments. Ooh, okay. And my mom was at work and I thought it would be a good idea to get the flower and just line it up on the ceiling fan. I don't even remember how I got it on the ceiling fan being a child. I think I moved the furniture and stood on the back of the couch and just took a bag of flour. No. And lined it all on the blades of the ceiling fan. Yeah. I'd gotten a dish towel and I'd like draped it into my pants and had one tucked in my shirt so it looked like a scientist had a lab coat on. Okay. I, was, I found like some. Like an apron? Yeah, like an apron. Okay. Yeah. I had found some sunglasses so I had sunglasses on because I obviously didn't have safety goggles. <laughs> I waited. I sat there and waited on my mom to come home. <laughs> and. When my mom came home, I had all the lights off. She got home, she came in, she turned the light on. Flower went <laughs> everywhere. Okay. Everywhere. The, the living room I'm was gonna ask your mom covered in flour. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard that story. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's so cute. She, she couldn't even get mad. She couldn't even get mad. It was just so funny. It was cute everywhere. And, and then I piled some up and uh, I'm trying to make an explosion, like a cloud explosion, you know. So I take this flower that I've got piled up and I blow into it. <laughs> and flower goes everywhere. It's all in my nose, it's in my glasses, it's up in my eyes, it's it's everywhere. It was That's so cute. It I was can't intense. wait to ask Ma about that. That's so yeah, funny. it was it was definitely an intense moment. Okay. So it was fun. That sounds fun. <laughs> and it's it's, an, it's it's a good experience to be able to enjoy that without getting mm. in trouble. You know, I feel like some parents today would have freaked out and grounded the child. Yeah. And, you know. I've got to do and, better And to that. each his own. You know, every parent's going to raise their child differently. So however you do it, it's right. fine. Right. But luckily, I was able to enjoy that experience and celebrate it and just relish it because I did not get grounded. I did not get in trouble. Granted, I did have to clean it up. Right. But it wow. was fun. I would do it again. Way to go, Mama Sherry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> question number 20. This is the last, last question. Last one. Mm -hmm. All right. What would you do if a doctor gave you only five years left to live? Mm, that's a good way to end it right there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm a little OCD, very, very structured. So. 
task oriented, I would be torn on that because part of me would want to get my bills paid because I don't think I could take myself away from that routine of, again, what's right. Right. Of, you know, paying my bills and keeping all that up. But at the same time, I feel like I would want to get rid of everything, sell everything I have, and just travel and mm. do all these things on my bucket list. Yeah. Um, I've just started doing a bucket list this year. And I have it categorized between small things and big things. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, that's so, smart. So kind of like realistically, you're like, oh, I know this is bigger. So that might take a little longer to accomplish versus the little things that right. are more achievable a little bit faster. Correct. Yes. That's genius, yes. Mel. But if I had five years, I would I would want to get rid of everything and just okay. travel and do everything on my bucket list. Aww. Spend as much time with my family and friends. I think so, too. I think I would do the same. Yeah. I'd take you with me. Yay! <laughs> that would be so much fun. And you, Mom. I would take both of you guys. We love you, Mom and Shay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that is it. You answered oh, all 20 questions. Yay, we made it, y'all. <laughs> Oh my gosh, thanks for coming on my channel. Thank you for having me. She will be here a lot more. And I will list Mel's makeup and my makeup in the description box as usual. So don't forget to check that out. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And we will see you next week. Bye. Bye. I start back over. Okay. Existing would be. <laughs> Great. By okay. the way, yeah. Okay, yeah. You're doing great, Just, sweetie. I feel like I'm going for a job interview, y'all. <laughs> okay. It was um it was for your birthday. It was my birthday, yes. It was, oh shoot. <laughs> uh, I don't know what I'm doing with this. I'm trying to make it match my shirt here. My nose hair's got tickled. <laughs> Your face looks amazing. Doesn't it? Yes. I don't know what happened. I'm trying to make my eyes look like yours and it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> look at this arch on this one Shit, in there. Yeah. This one's curvy. Yeah. That one's archy. Let's see if we can change it. A little bit. <laughs> Your eyebrows are cousins, not identical twin sisters. That's hilarious. <gasps> Is that the first time you heard that? Yes. Really? Yep. Wow. There's diff apparently there's different ways to say that. Get a thumbnail, so <laughs> Bam <laughs> And had a couple minutes left to speak. Yay! Oh my gosh, I love you.